So you might have seen on the internet or on YouTube the idea and the construction of current limiters. Basically, the principle is if there's a dead short somewhere in the amp or anything that you're working on, uh, the current limiter will will minimize any sort of impact because you're restricting the the current going into the device. And if you watch Uncle Doug's YouTube video, he does a fantastic job of demonstrating. I'm not going to do it, but he t- he literally arcs, you know the the live wire and ground and just literally arcs it with his um, screwdriver and this bulb lights up like crazy, but there's no pops. There's no big sparks. It was relatively, uh, I'm not going to say safe, but it was, you know, minimizing all that sort of detrimental (laughs) impact. But what we have here is my construction of, of the box. I don't have a cover on here so I can show you sort of, the inner workings, but I went to Ace Hardware and they have these nice little junction boxes that are meant to be installed in the wall, but I'm going to use it for the current limiter, a portable current limiter, so you can kind of see uh, I had some scrap wood laying around. The idea here is that you have this end that goes into the wall. This is the kill switch. In case there was an incident, you can quickly turn it on and off without having to unplug from the wall, Uh, and that powers... It goes through the current limiter and then comes through and makes the final connection at the um, outlet here. So you're going to plug your amp into one of these. The current is going to go from the switch. So it's going to go wall, switch, current, limiter, and then to your amp. So if your amp has a dead short, it's going to be limited, the current is, by that bulb. I don't know if I mentioned this, but it's a 60 watt incandescent LED won't work. Um, Uncle Doug uses like a 200 watt. In his video, I'm using a 60 and it worked just fine. So construction. I'm going to have on the screen a schematic that I'm going to borrow from someone. I don't know which one yet. But you're going to have the wall outlet. So here's a receptacle. And the black of that is going to go to the switch. In this case, the switch for off is down here. And when I go up, on is up here. So black, black. And then the other side of this black is going through the wire. And then it's going to be adding this in series. So the black wire comes up, connects to one side. And then I'm reusing. This is not technically the way you should do it. I'm reusing the white wire on the return and I'm just uh, noting that that return is black. So if you look down here, the white wire from the wall, okay, the white wire from the wall is going to the white or silverish um, screw here. So that's kind of the, the electrical outlet thing is that the white screws are for the white terminal and the brass looking screws are for the black. Since I have, I'm have, u- i reusing the white that side from this cable is, is white when technically it should be black, but we are making a note of that in our head. This is not going in any sort of commercial application, so we should be okay there. So now I'm going to plug this in and we're going to fire up the amp and I'll show you kind of sort of what happens in a good way. And you should do this for the first time. Um, You're going to do this without tubes. So when you fire up the amp for the first time, take all the tubes out. You might have put them in just to feel cool and look at it in in amazement and all that stuff. But yeah, take your tubes all out. This is for the first fire up, okay? And not a fire. I should stop using that term. All right. So take all your tubes out. Let's plug this in. Let's plug the amp into here. All right. So we have the amp plugged in to this receptacle with the power off. The power on the amp is off and you should have no tubes installed. Okay. 
I have my tubes installed just because it's for demonstration purposes and I already know this works. So pretend like there's no tubes <laughs> installed and the power is off on both of them and we have the reverb connected, we have a load. Even though there's no tubes in there, it's still, let's just be sure. So have it plugged in to the correct speaker ohmage. So reverb, ohm, uh, load, and we're good to go, okay? So we're going to turn this on. All right, now we're hot, so don't lick anything. And if we watch, when I turn the amp on, let's see if I can simultaneously show this. Oops. Whoa. All right, so since I have the tubes installed, I'm going to draw a little bit more current, and this bulb is going to be a little bit brighter. But what we're looking for, and it is, and I don't think it's capturing very well on camera, but the bulb initially was pretty bright, and now is sort of stabilized and has dimmed quite a bit. If you use a higher wattage bulb, this would be a lot more dramatic of, of a um, swing up and then a come down. All right. So, it, and with the 200 watt bulbs, this would almost be off or pretty dim. Okay. So, as long as that thing's not screaming bright, which this camera's doing a really bad job. Let me see if I can lock it. Okay. So right now I'm going to turn off the amp. Okay. Now that I have the lock, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn it on. You're going to see it be bright and then it'll dim a bit. And then that's good. So if it's dim, that's good. So now I'm going to turn the amp on. Um, with the tubes installed. So let's just pretend like that was your first time. You can turn the amp on at this point and check because right now with just the standby, you are testing only the power basically and these front two capacitors. Uh, be careful if you touch in here now that the amp is on. Um, and then <clears throat> that then you can turn the amp on itself. It's going to be really bright because it's sort of choking. The amp is drawing a lot more current. Uh, than that bulb can handle. So maybe a 200 watt would be better suited for this application. But it didn't get crazy, crazy bright. And that's a good thing. Because that means there's no shorts. And plus, sneak, you know, behind the scenes, I know this amp already works. So we're going with the best case desired results on this. So pardon my mess. This is called the desk of progress. Um, but inside it's beautiful, isn't it? Okay. So after you've tested and that bulb didn't go screaming bright with the 60 watt. And if you went out and bought a 200 watt, it's probably a good idea just a 200 watt floodlight, uh, not led, make sure you get incandescent you're pretty much ready to install the tubes. Now install the tubes and do that same thing over again. And then after that, um, and you see the tubes, they, they may not glow because the current is being limited that much. So if there's no sort of indication that they're shorts, you are pretty much ready to plug this amp in straight. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna unplug it because I don't have the cover on. Okay, and now we're safe to remove the amp from here, and we're going to plug it in, okay, directly to the wall. Make sure you have your load on. Ideally, you probably want to have a cert plug that into a surge protector, but I'm fairly confident everything's okay with this amp. So we're going to fire it up. This LED glows a lot brighter and with the 60 Hertz you might see that the that that light dims and comes back just from the frequency of the of that flashing and my camera um, sh shutter speed or uh, you know basically the frames per second of the camera it may look like it's dimming and coming back but in fact in real life it's it's nice and stable it just doesn't show up well on camera so that's a little trick all right, so now we see things glowing. 
Well, probably not that much on camera because the light is on for the film. But you can see glowing of the power tube, so we're looking good there. Nothing's crazy hot at this point. Okay. I'm going to fire it up. Turn some volume up. And, and we have tone. So you might have noticed that I had the Smooth and Slim uh, clone that I built. I'll get more into that in a, in a later series. But this is firing up the amp for the first time safely to do it, quote, the right way using a current limiter. So we're rocking. My favorite song. All right. <laughs> 